Hi, my name is Chris Revere, and I'm a technical solutions architect for Cisco Cloud Security. Today, I'm going to show you how easy it is to connect your Meraki MX security appliance to the Umbrella Cloud, allowing you to quickly provide Cisco's secure Internet Gateway, or SIG, capabilities to your users. In just a few clicks, we'll provision an Umbrella SD-WAN connector in Umbrella's Cloud and connect our MX to it. Then we'll take a look at how easy it is to configure a web policy to protect our users. Let's get right into it. I'm going to start off in my Umbrella dashboard. Navigating to Deployments, Network Tunnels, I can see that there's currently two network tunnels established from Meraki MX to data centers in New York and Los Angeles. Flipping over to my Meraki console, I'm going to navigate to Organization Cloud OnRamp. This is where I have the ability to link my Meraki and Umbrella organizations simply by adding in my management API keys, which I've already done. You can see I already have a deployment connecting New York and Los Angeles. I'm going to simply create another one to connect my MX in London. I click Deploy. I enter in a name for my Umbrella SD-WAN connector. And I now specify the data centers which I'd like to deploy this to. I'm going to choose London and Paris since those are closest to my MX in London and click Continue. And that's really it. From the Meraki side, in just one click, I'm now starting a deployment of an Umbrella SD-WAN connector into some data centers in Europe. And this is going to allow me to extend my SD-WAN fabric from my MXs globally and connect them to the Umbrella cloud, thus unlocking some of the SIG functionality. As we can see, that's already done. And I can navigate to deployments and we can see the status of the SASE connector connecting London and Paris. The next step is to actually connect my MX to those newly spun up connectors. To do that, I navigate to security and SD-WAN site to site VPN. I'm going to select a spoke architecture and here I can simply add the new connectors as hubs. So I'm going to choose my primary as London and my secondary as Paris and click save. And that's it. I've now connected my MX in London to data centers in London and Paris. Let's flip back over to the umbrella interface and we can see that the network tunnels, I now have two additional tunnels connecting to data centers in London and Paris. Let's take a look at some policies which I've configured. Starting with a data loss prevention policy. This is a policy I've created to protect uh, customer credit card numbers from being exposed on the internet and I've basically set it up as a financial category to protect credit card numbers. There's a number of out-of-the-box policies which you can use, whether that be social security numbers, healthcare records, financial information, personal information, etc. Let's also look at a web policy which I've configured for my knowledge workers. Expanding this policy, I can see first and foremost that the policy is applied against an identity, and that identity consists of all of my network tunnels. Drilling into this, I can see that that's protecting all of my tunnels from my MXs to the various data centers, including the new tunnels to London and Paris, which we've started configuring. Some additional options I have from the policy here are the ability to completely customize the block page, that is the web page that the user is going to see when content's blocked. I've also enabled some file analysis. This means that every file being downloaded through the tunnels will actually be inspected via virus scanners in the cloud, as well as Cisco's global AMP file hash database, and files that are unknown can be sent to our threat grid for additional analysis. Additionally, I can configure file type controls. In this case, I'm only blocking a few different files. Specifically, I'm blocking ISO images from being downloaded, as well as some system-related files, including SCR files. HTTPS inspection has been enabled. Um, note that in order for HTTPS inspection to work, this will require the Umbrella root certificate to be deployed across your clients. I've also configured some security settings. So we're going to be protecting our users from downloading malware, command and control, various phishing sites. We can also see some additional functionality that's been enabled in this policy, including a policy to warn my users from going against time wasters. So what will happen is the user will get a message saying, 
they're being warned about going to the site, but they'll have the option to continue to visit it. In this case, that's just protecting us from going to auction related websites, which could be considered time wasters. I've also configured a remote browser isolation policy against news and sports websites, as well as uncategorized sites that we may not know much about. What the remote browser isolation is gonna do is it's gonna allow me to basically access that content via a virtual browser that's located in the cloud. So the idea is that virtual browser gets more exposed to any sorts of attacks versus the actual browser that's running locally. Let's take a look back at the network tunnels under deployments to see the status of these tunnels which I was provisioning. Great, it looks like all the tunnels are active now, so my traffic is now routing through Umbrella SIG. Now let's take a look at this in action. First, I'm gonna verify that I'm not currently connected to SIG. Pulling up my IP address, I can see I have a 157 address connected through my ISP in San Francisco. Now let's connect to my SIG SSID. Great, I'm connected. I'm gonna refresh this page. And you can now see that my traffic's being routed through our Los Angeles data center with a 146 IP address. Let's see if I can download the latest Ubuntu image. Whoops, accidentally typed in ubuntu.org. Let's go to ubuntu.com. Now, if you remember, we configured a policy to block ISO images. So as I try to access the latest download, it should automatically block it. And there we go. The file has been blocked due to file type policy ISO. You can also see the experience that the user sees is customized. In this case, I have a little character with a thumbs down telling me about this policy. Let's try taking some credit card numbers and putting them in paste bin. Now I've just grabbed a set of randomly generated credit card numbers, which I'm going to paste here. And let's just give it a name and click paste. You can see this was instantly prevented from being uploaded because of the DLP policy that I've configured. And if you remember, we configured remote browser isolation policy for uncategorized sites, news, and sports. So let's quickly pull up a news site and see what that looks like. Going to BBC, we can see the page loads completely as expected, but in the very bottom right, you'll actually see there's a little banner telling me that the page is isolated. So this is really preventing anything from being executed locally in my browser. Instead, it's gonna be executed in that remote browser in the cloud. And finally, let's demonstrate the time wasters that we were talking about. I'm gonna see if I can go to Craigslist. You'll see that I'm taken to a warning page telling me that this may not conform to my organization's acceptable use policy, but I do have the option to continue and actually go to Craigslist. and I can access the site fine, and all this information has been logged. Finally, let's see what some of this information looks like in the Umbrella dashboard. Navigating to Reporting Activity Search, I have the ability to quickly sort through any of this information which we've been logging. Let's start by looking at the pages where we warned the user. Filtering this, I can quickly see the user's attempts to access craigslist.org and that those were in fact allowed. Next, let's look at pages which were isolated. Here we can see the request to bbc.com were allowed and in fact isolated, and this was due to the category of news and media, which we configured in our policy. Let's look at some pages which were actually blocked. Filtering this activity, we see a number of requests which were blocked, with the most recent being pastebin.com. And looking at the additional details, we can actually see that this was blocked due to data loss prevention policy, which blocked and prevented that information from being uploaded. Looking at some other blocks, we can also see the ISO image from ubuntu.com, which we blocked, as well as the phishing attempt to ubuntu.org. And that's it. Thanks for spending a few minutes seeing this integration between Meraki and Umbrella in action.
You can get more information at umbrella.com.